Welcome to another episode of the PhD Toolkit, a series in which we review tools, techniques and software that are going to make your life as a scientist just a little bit easier. This series will contain our honest opinions and experiences with different tools and today we're going to look at Site AI. Site AI is a research assistant that uses AI to help you find and keep track of the latest research in your field. Not only has it one of the most accurate literature search tools that we have come across so far, it also helps you visualize and keep track of an entire research field. As proper scientists, we are going to review each tool in this series with a set of rigorous criteria. We're going to look at function, ease of use, price and significance. And lastly, we are going to rank each tool on our toolkit scoreboard. But before we get into any of that, Jaron is going to give you a tour through Sight. So that brings us to our tour. And if you would like to follow along or check out Sight for yourself, then you can go to thestrugglingscientist.com slash Sight. And we'll also provide the link uh, down below in the episode description as well. Once you click that link, you can go directly to Sight. There you can log in or register if this is your first time using it. And once you do that, you're logged into Sight and you can get started. Now, it is important to note that Sight will want you to do some things to overall enhance its utility for you. So for example, installing its browser extension or completing your profile. These are all very useful, very handy things to do and will overall enhance the value that Sight can provide you, but they aren't urgent. And so for right now, we're going to ignore those and focus on the three most important features that I think PG students and researchers need to know about Sight. And those are Sight Assistant, Smart Citations, and Dashboard. Let's dive right into Site Assistant. Now, Site Assistant is basically like your own personal AI research assistant. And what I mean by that is that you can ask it a research question and it will answer, kind of like a ChatGPT, but it's much better than that because Site Assistant actually has access to millions of research papers, not only open access papers, but also closed access papers, and not just their abstracts, but also the full text, making it much more useful and accurate and reliable for researchers, for scientists and researchers and PG students. In addition to that, you can also customize Site Assistant a little bit to, to fit your needs and help you answer your research question. So you can go to settings down here. There you can select the length of the answer that you wanted to provide, whether that's short or long. You can select whether it answers your question based on a single paper that you provided or a subset of papers that you've pre-selected or all using all of its millions of research papers that it has access to. And you can also select a lot more things as well, such as the structure of its answer, as well as the types of journals that it looks at and much, much more. So once we do all that, I'll now ask it a specific question. So I'll ask it about my gene of interest, namely FHL2, and what is the function of this gene? And I know a lot about this because this is the topic of my own PhD. So let's see what it comes up with. All right, cool. So you can already see here that it basically came up with a lot of information that it wrote down here. And one thing that really sets Site Assistant apart from a tool like ChatGPT is also that it provides the citations. It provides links to the original papers that it uses to answer your question, making it so much more accurate and useful for researchers. Now, that also brings me directly to the next point that I want to talk about, smart citations. And it's important to note here that Site Assistant, Smart Citations, and Dashboards, they're not just completely independent features, but they're all interwoven together, interconnected, and they basically enhance each other to make Site a better tool for researchers overall. So you can already see here uh, that while we're still on the, the page for Site Assistant, you can see that in the section here where it highlights the different citations that it used to generate the answer, you can see a text snippet of the original paper that it used for that and part of the answer. And you can see down below that there are these, these little pieces of numbers that give you a little bit more indication. These are the smart citations. They indicate about that specific paper, how many times it's been cited by other papers, which is obviously very useful for you to know if this is a highly impactful foundational paper in your field of research. But it also provides you more information like whether or not out of those citations, whether or not those papers support the claims that came out of that paper or they contrast with it. 
So if it's highly contrasted, maybe this is a much more touchy subject or maybe it's not really perhaps super kosher. But regardless, that gives you much more insight and information about that paper before you just, you know, go about it like, oh, it's been cited or it's been cited this many times. So smart citations, super useful. And I wish I had that for my literature review, for example. In addition to these features, Cite also provides you dashboards. Now, dashboards you can think of as your own sort of personal, personalized curated library of papers that you've read and trust. And you can already see here that below these options of the different citations that Cite Assistant provided me, I have the option of adding them to my dashboard. And I already hinted at this before when I was talking about Cite, Cite Assistant that you can select, you can curate your answer based on a subset of papers that you've pre-selected, and that's your dashboard. So say, for example, you're writing your literature review on a specific topic, you might want to curate a list of papers that you want to use for your literature review, and you want to frequently reference that list of papers to delve deeper, find answers, come up with gaps in the literature, what have you. And that's what the dashboard does. It basically curates that entire list for you that you can reference it back while you're asking your questions with Site Assistant and keep reusing it like that. And it'll also allow you to keep tracking those papers to see how they're doing, if they're getting cited more, if they're becoming even more important. Maybe you found a paper that is still early, uh, just recently got published, but might become very foundational in the coming years as well. So dashboards are extremely useful because they sort of bridge the gap between being too specific when asking something like site assistant on a specific paper or too broad while asking all the millions of papers that it has access to. So it sort of serves as your own curated list of papers that you trust, that you've verified are good and are probably very useful for the, the upcoming years of your academic career that, you know, this is the foundation of your knowledge base as well in the field. So these were the three features that I wanted to highlight in this tour, and I hope they were useful. As you can see, Site has a lot of features that any researcher could use in their lives. It is truly a tool made by researchers for researchers. Now, in full transparency, the researchers that have created Site did ask us to review their tool in our series. And as always, we'll give our honest opinions and ratings in this episode. So let's get right into the first criteria we're going to look at, which is functions. Now in the tour, we have already seen a couple of very awesome functions, but there are a couple more that I would have loved to have had during my PhD. And the first one that I would like to take a look at is the search function. It basically is just a literature search tool, but it finds papers that, for example, PubMed or Google Scholar would easily overlook. Papers that don't even have your protein of interest in the title, but have it somewhere in the text. For example, a GWAS study that found your protein popping up. Come up in this search from Site.ai and you can immediately see in the tool itself what it says about your protein and where it popped up. A really amazing feature that even found papers that I didn't know were about my protein. Another amazing function that I would like to take a look at is the reference check. You can either do this with just one paper where you upload a paper that is at the basis of your field and then you can see what the conversation is, what papers agree with this paper, what papers are in opposition of this paper and with this you can keep track of the entire progression of your field. Especially if you are a PI and you want to check this every couple of years, you really get to keep up to date with the conversation that is going on. Now another really amazing way to do this is to use the plugin for Zotero. Now this is at the moment only available for Zotero, but it might be really worth it. Now when you install the site plugin to Zotero, you will get a lot more information about each of your papers. You will see how many papers agree with it, how many papers found some opposing results, and how often papers also have been cited. All very valuable information that you can use during your research and your writing. If you want to know more about, for example, the papers that found opposing results, you can very easily look into this with the button at the bottom that takes you back to the site app and shows you which papers agreed and which papers opposed. Here you can see even in more detail what exactly these papers found. Now here you can for example see that these papers found a phenotype that opposed a little bit with what you would expect based on the result of the first paper. 
which is really interesting and might even warrant further investigation. We think that Site AI is a really valuable tool, especially for people who are a little bit more experienced in their research, for example PIs or professors who want to keep track of their research fields over time and want to keep up to date. But of course, Site AI also is really valuable for new researchers who can use the search function to find information about their topics. Now, because Site can help so many researchers, we have decided to give Site 5 out of 5 stars for function. So that brings us to the ease of use. And with ease of use, we actually mean a couple of different things. So for example, how readily available is the tool for researchers to use? So for example, is it on your iPhone or just online? We also mean how difficult is the tool to learn and pick up and use optimally, as well as its overall interface. Is it a pleasant experience to use or is it kind of a grind? as well as how customizable is, is it to your needs as a researcher, right? Like not every researcher and research is the same, so you might need slightly different things tweaked to, to fit your needs. So with that said, Site is an online tool, and that is great for most researchers, right? Like most people are working behind their computers with an internet access to, to write their literature review, write their manuscript, write their thesis. And so as long as you have a working computer with internet access, then you have access to Site and you can do all your amazing work there. However, I can definitely imagine a scenario where there's your PI or some supervisors out there at a conference who want to be accessing the literature with Sight on their iPhone. Unfortunately, it's not available as an app, but you could still probably still access it online via the internet connection. So Sight overall available for researchers to use when they need it most. In addition to that, Sight is also kind of tricky when it comes to how difficult it is to, to pick up and learn because there are some features that are easy to get started with right away, like Site Assistant and Smart Citations. Once you, you know how to ask a question when it comes to Site Assistant to get an answer. And so that's easy to pick up. Smart Citations as well, the moment you have a look at it for the first time, you'll understand it, you know what exactly it means and you know how to get the value out of it. Whereas other features perhaps require a little, a little bit more deliberation, a little bit more forethought as to how exactly you're gonna use them, like the dashboards. So you can't just, well, you can, but I wouldn't recommend it to throw every paper you think is interested in interesting into one dashboard and go from there. But maybe if you're writing a literature review or working on a specific project, then you might create a theme based dashboard on that specific topic that you'll reference and use a lot moving forward for your literature review or your academic career in general. And I would also say something like a dashboard is also more useful, perhaps for a more senior researcher who wants to keep track of every all the major publications in their research field as well, see how those are going, see how the, maybe perhaps their own publications are doing as well. That's where I see dashboards as some somewhat of a trickier feature to apply directly because it requires a little bit more deliberate thought before you just start using it. And it might be more beneficial for a more senior researcher, for example. But with that said, these features are still great and it doesn't necessarily need to be the case for like a starting PhD student that they can't use dashboards. I would actually strongly suggest to start creating these thematic dashboards and start using them because they are quite powerful. Furthermore, Site has a quite sleek interface overall, especially when it comes to Site Assistant. You have probably have used something like a ChatGPT before where you just ask a question. This is nothing different from that in terms of like the overall interface. However, when it comes to searching for specific things, you do notice that at some point it, the screen gets very clogged up with a lot of text. Site provides all this information to you with the smart citations, with text-based answers. That's just a lot of text on the screen and it can be a little bit daunting at times to sort of prioritize and figure out what exactly is the main thing that you should be focusing on when using Site sometimes. However, once you get used to it, you can start seeing that, for example, on the screen, you can see that there are more smart citations hidden below this button right here that you might not have noticed before. You might have just dived into the, the citations that were readily visible on the screen and ignored those, but there's still more there to, to dive in further. So the interface is also a little bit tricky in that sense that it can be super easy, but at sometimes, depending on the, the questions you ask, depending on the research that you're doing, it might be a bit overwhelming at times, but still you can get a handle on that if you know what you're looking for. And lastly, 
site is also quite customizable. So especially when you look at Site Assistant, you have an entire settings option there where you can select whether you want to just look at one paper, all the millions of papers, types of journals, the publication date. You have so much freedom and options there that it, it's great that that is actually exactly what you might need for your research, that you can specify exactly what you're looking for and try to get reliable, accurate answers that you trust. For other things as well, site is also quite customizable and quite quite adaptable to your needs. For example, if you're using Zotero, then there's a site Zotero plugin that you can connect and have smart citations appear in your Zotero as well. So all of that is quite great and can help site integrate into your workflow and adapt to you that you can adapt site as well to your needs. So overall, given all these things, I would say site gets a four out of five stars for its ease of use. So the next criteria we're going to look at is pricing. Now site does have a free version that you can try out for seven days, but afterwards you do need to pay for usage of site. Now it's either almost 16 euros if you pay per month or it gets reduced to 9.55 if you pay yearly. Now this might seem like quite a bit, but Site brings some of the best accuracy we have seen in tools so far. It doesn't make things up and it really gives good references for everything it says. It is able to summarize papers really, really accurate and we were very, very impressed. Site also has plans for institutions. So if you really love Site after your trial period, you might also be able to convince your institute to get Site for you. With all of that said, because it doesn't have a long-term free option and you have to pay to use its features, Site does lose a couple of stars on the pricing scale. We are going to give Site three out of five stars for pricing. So the last criteria we're gonna discuss is significance. And I would say that something like Site is useful for researchers basically at any stage of their academic career, whether they're just starting their PhD or are more senior researchers with many PhD students under them, working for them on different projects, for example. The one thing I would say, though, about Site is that it seems to have some features that are sort of universally great for whatever stage of research you're at, like Site Assistant, and some features that you can really see perhaps get more value out of if you're a more senior researcher with, for example, dozens, if not hundreds of papers under your name. And one of those features is the fact that it can keep track of your profile and you can connect your ORCID to it. So it can basically keep track of all of your publications, how they're getting cited, how many times they've been cited. And that is super useful for a senior researcher who has dozens of papers under them, right? Like they have basically then one dashboard that they can see all their metrics on and see how well they're doing, how well their papers are doing without having to look that up themselves. And that's just saving time and makes it much more clear to them as well. But for a starting PhD student who has zero papers under their name yet, that feature is basically non-existent. So th that's something to keep in, mind, keep in mind a little bit when it comes to site that there are features that you'll grow into or maybe will grow with you as you develop in your academic career as well. And there are just some features that you can get started right away and get value out of right away. So with all that said, we are gonna be giving Site a 4.5 out of five stars for its overall significance. And that brings us already to the last part of today's episode, where we're going to put Site on our toolkit scoreboard. But before we do that, we first need to give Site an overall score. Now we think Site AI is a really amazing tool for experienced researchers who want to keep track of their fields over time, but also for newer PhD students who need to dive into a research topic. Because of this, we are going to give Site an amazing rating of 4.5 out of 5 stars. So definitely check it out via our link thestrugglingscientist.com slash site. Now the last thing we have to do is put Site on our toolkit scoreboard and we are going to put it at the awesome tier. A really deserved ranking for this amazing tool. Now, if you are really interested in what other tools we would place on the scoreboard that we haven't made a video about yet, you can sign up to our newsletter via the strugglingscientist.com slash newsletter and you will get the fully filled in tier list before we create the rest of the videos that we have planned. And if you really love this episode and would like to see more like it, then definitely subscribe on your favorite listening platform and we hope to see you next time. Bye.